Hey y'all, welcome back to Seeing What Sticks. If you're new here, my name is Jonathan Wall, and on this program, we discuss story ideas. Now, in earlier videos, I have mentioned that I was also a writer, so I'll have to fill y'all in on that at some point. Eventually, maybe. We'll, we'll see what happens, we'll see what happens. Anyways, today I have an idea for a story that involves an origami assassin. Now, what is an origami assassin? How is that supposed to work in a story? And most importantly, does it stick? Now, often in more traditional assassination, espionage type of stories, your MC, your main character, has uh, either a background or some sort of expertise in a relevant skill. Maybe they're hand-to-hand -hand combat specialists. Or maybe they're master manipulators and con men. Hell, our MC could be a triple jointed, sharp shooting, kung fu voodoo juju master for all we know. Because that would all be relevant to spying and espionage, you know? The ability to manipulate people, the ability to handle yourself in one on one combat, and of course, the ability to uh, assault or assassinate a target from a distance, which would be the whole sharpshooter, dead eye sniper from a thousand paces kind of situation. But what if our MC's main skill was primarily origami art? Now, what is origami art? Well, it's basically taking a flat sheet of paper, which is often square, and sometimes it can be of colored paper, and folding it into some sort of shape, such as a symbol, it could be an animal, it could be a flower, um, or it could even be a person. Now don't sit there and tell me that y'all went through four years of high school and never once made one of these. If you don't know what this is, it is an origami shuriken, or an origami throwing star. These things are super easy to make, it's just a matter of folds on a slip of paper, but the construction is simple, it's solid, and they're super fun to throw at people. I just remember in high school, just me and my friends would act like ninjas and just throwing these freaking things all across the halls. And I mean, it's deceptively scary just how dangerous these things can actually be. I mean, these points are pretty good and sharp. I mean, you could put someone's eye out with this thing. I mean, who would ever think that a slip of office paper could be so dangerous? Maybe our assassin? Mm -hmm. And speaking of ninjas, you can actually make a paper kunai knife, a paper throwing knife, using origami. I mean, I had no idea this was actually a thing, and if I'm being honest, I actually learned how to make one of these for this video. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy the kind of things that you learn, you know, doing YouTube. But, anyways. Now, I will confess, Part of my inspiration for making this video came from the Korean actor Lee Byung Hung uh, in his role as an assassin in Red 2. You know, the scene where he enters an office building to talk to some corporate bigwig, but they make him take off all of his clothes, they check his pockets, they check all of his, they check his pits, they check his hair, make sure he's got nothing on him. And he basically enters the office room or the meeting room with absolutely nothing. And he sits down and he talks to his client. And his client says, oh, I want so-and-so killed. And hands him this, this uh, kill contract. So what Lee's character does is he just calmly talks to him. He says, yeah, of course, yeah, of course. Um, I can definitely kill him for you. Uh, but there's just a problem, just like a small problem. And as he's talking, he's actually folding the contract he was handed into this I think it's a crane. It looks like an origami crane or some sort of origami bird. And his client asks, well, what's the problem? And uh, Lee kind of holds up his holds up his origami creation and he says, uh, so-and-so, the, the guy you want to kill, uh, he pays better. And then he just goes, Kah! and <laughs> stabs the guy in the throat with the tip of his origami bird that he just created. And then he just kind of silently just stands up and walks out 
and nobody sees anything. And I'm like, that is so freaking cool. If you're a really good assassin, you can become very clever and use whatever's around you to kill your target. You know, and nobody expects a sheet of paper to be lethal. Another thing that inspired this video was the game Hitman 2 Silent Assassin. It came out in 2002, and you basically take on the role of Agent 47 in his quest to save one of his friends who was kidnapped because, um, I think it was a Mafia Don wants 47 to be his personal hitman, but 47 said no, and the Mafia Don kidnapped his friend as revenge or something. Honestly, the story doesn't matter. What matters is it's a really good assassination game because you can pick so many avenues to solve your problem, which is to kill your target. You can walk around wearing disguises, you can enter just about any room and any building that you're in, and you can choose between total stealth or just running in, guns a-blazing, shooting and looting everybody, and you still manage to kill your target, which is what makes that game so fun and dynamic in the first place. But what really stands out, and what inspired me was the fact that so many objects in the game can be of use. It's not just weapons, it's not just guns and knives and bombs and so on. You can pick up cell phones, you can pick up wooden spoons, you can pick up um, soda cans, you can pick up beer bottles, you can pick up um, headphone cords, and all these can be used to your advantage. Some of them can even be used as lethal weapons, like the headphone cord you can use to choke someone out. You can bludgeon somebody with a soda can. You can throw a wrench. You can throw a pipe. You can beat somebody with a golf club. I mean, there's just so many different options. And I love how the game gives you that sort of open-ended feeling. And that's what kind of got me to thinking, I mean, what if he's in an office and all he has are like books or just loose leaf paper? What is he going to do with that? Now let's get into the specifics of our story, starting with our MC's background, or their origins. It would make sense that the origins of origami and the origins of our character could be the same place, which is Japan. Now I'm not saying that they have to be Japanese just because they know how to make origami art, but it would be an interesting sort of cultural connection if our main character started in Japan and learned how to do traditional origami and because they're such, what I'm saying is they could be experts at origami because they come from the origins of origami. So they have the most direct sort of cultural uh, education in this art form. And again, they don't have to be Japanese. Maybe our MC is just an arts major. Maybe they are very handy. Maybe they're very crafty. Maybe they're bored one day in class and started folding paper and realized, hey, this could be dangerous to somebody. <laughs> I mean, just somebody who's creative, somebody who has a sort of DIY mindset. Maybe there's somebody in the STEM fields, like an engineer, who understands how to construct something that's solid and workable, which would make sense if the weapon has to be something dangerous, like a dagger. Unlike my daggers, I mean, look at this thing. Look at this. It's just flimsy. I'm not going to tear this thing up because I made it and I like it. But it's just a fucking... It's... It's... Useless. Fucking useless. But, maybe our MC can make one of those things that's actually of substantial use. I don't know. We got to play around with it a little bit. Anyways. How would our artsy paper folding master end up as an assassin in the first place? Do they have debts? Are they in need of money? Are they out for revenge? Maybe they're hired by some sort of shadowy assassination organization for whatever reason. That last point is honestly the most important thing to nail down because it frames the actions and motivations of our MC moving forward. Who is the target? Why are they killing this person in the first place? What's the payoff for it? Who supports the assassin? Who funds the assassin? I mean, what is the, the dynamic between our main character, the people that he works with, the people that he's working against, 
and the people who are just getting in the way. All these questions need to be answered so the story can flow in the right direction and provide appropriate setups for rising conflicts, escalations, plot twists, something that they um, say a lot in, in the writing community is when you break your character's legs, which is basically an unexpected complication that just causes a whole new level of difficulty for our character. It's often done to uh, sort of break up the monotony if things are going too slow, if things are kind of boring, or if there are very low stakes. An author will break their character's legs, which causes a new issue to be solved, often on top of the already complicated issue that they're trying to solve. Maybe our assassin is getting ready to kill his target, or the, he or she is sneaking into the building to kill the target, but they're having trouble getting to that floor because they don't have a key card, they're not on the guest list if it's some sort of party, or everybody in the building knows that they don't work there. So they're obviously going to be spotted and thrown out. You know, this is an extra complication that just kind of adds another layer of difficulty, and that adds tension to the story, which is something that a lot of readers look for. And you need to be able to set all this up by having the initial motivations. What also needs to be established early on is our MC's personality. This comes back to the background and initial motivations of our MC as an assassin in whatever form they take, so that we have a better understanding of how they're going to react to certain situations. More than likely, if their background is one that has little conflict or hardship, then the act of killing somebody for whatever reason would be rather difficult for them. It, it'll be jarring for them to leave their relatively comfortable life that was low conflict, maybe low energy, peaceful, quiet, and to all of a sudden be in this world where they're sneaking up behind people, stabbing them in the neck or stabbing them in the eye, and and just all this violence and all this this aggression that they're just not used to. I kind of see it as, if our MC is an unusual choice for the story setting, if they seem out of place, then they should feel out of place. The character should feel deeply conflicted with what they've done, because it's something that's so out of place for them in their lives. If they were just a quiet, happy-go-lucky kind of person who is just thrown into a world of death and violence and lies, the act of murder should be so far out of their comfort zone that actually committing the act should summon up feelings of, of fear, of revulsion, of dread, of terror. They should be disgusted with the, what they've done because they've never had to do it before. Now, if the character arc is more typical for this genre of story, where the MC is usually some sort of ex-marine, ex-military, ex-CIA, trained special ops type of character who's, who's hardened, who's battle-worn, who's just a killing machine, and they just so happen to have a special talent or an unorthodox skill for creating weapons out of paper, then they would react as you would often expect them to, with cold, apathy, indifference, just killing people would not be a problem for them at all. Or maybe they feel aggression or anger because there's some sort of emotional connection to the people that he's killing, it, depending on how the story goes. But they're not going to be disgusted. They're not going to be like feeling something deep in their stomach that says that this is wrong because they're used to it by this point. So, origami assassins. Does it stick? Well... Given all that we've talked about so far, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say a definite yes, this idea does stick. Because, really, the character doesn't have to be somebody who's outside of the genre's norm. They can be a tough person. They can be a cold-hearted killer. It's just the method that they use is a bit unusual. Or, if you want to go the unorthodox route and have an out-of-place character, then you can add a lot more emotion to the story because 
they're doing something that's, at least in their minds, very wrong. It's something that they are not used to, so they're definitely outside of their comfort zone. Honestly, nobody should be used to killing people for money, for revenge, for anything like that. So a character that's more down to earth, that's more realistic, like an average Joe, who is put in that situation, should have deep emotional reactions to what they're doing. So, I mean, either way, I definitely think it works. It, it definitely does. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. And if you have any ideas for a story or an extra video, please leave those down as well. And I might just mention them in the next episode. All right. See y'all.